How's it going? So, after building the laser, I kind of wanted to give myself a break and stick to some simple projects, but this has just been tickling at my brain for too long. I gotta do something about it. I wanna try and 3D print metal. I think it was a Veritasium video where they're 3D printing spaceships. Too cool, man. I wanna do that. I'm not really too antsy to build a CNC machine from scratch again, so. We're gonna start by using the frame of my Ender 3. You've served me well, buddy. This could be your last breath. So you may have seen videos of these before. It's basically stacking welds on top of each other is what I'm trying to achieve here. How am I gonna make this work? I don't know, but I'm gonna give it my darndest. First, we're gonna tackle the hardware, which is gonna take this guy and stick it on this guy. So as you can see, I've started to disassemble everything. Don't mind the jumbled mess. The main things that we need to modify are the print head and the bed. So I think we're gonna start by attaching this guy to the print head. So I've made these pieces to attach the head to the gantry. This spacer will keep it so it doesn't interfere with this screw. I've gone ahead and cut all this extra fluff off of the head. And this will install here using this piece. Like so. So we got our print head all ready to go. I may need a little extra bracing because it is a little wobbly. But for now, we're calling it good. Now, we need to start thinking about how we're gonna make this bed. And the part that I was really racking my brain on was to figure out how to completely isolate the bed from the rest of the frame of the machine so that there's no weld current passing through the machine. But if you look at it, it already is electrically isolated. The only thing attaching the bed to the frame is these rubber wheels and this rubber timing belt. So, this just got a lot easier. Now then, what I want for a bed is basically a fixture plate with tapped holes in it so that I can put a piece of aluminum on top to use to weld on and fasten it down all over the place. That way we don't get any funky warpage. We got a bed. This little tab on the back is where we can mount our ground to the welder. Like so. This will mount to the printer just the same as the old bed using these leveling mechanism things. All right, took a little bit of convincing, but I got the bed installed and the original leveling mechanism will still work, which is awesome. And now we got to figure out what we're going to do for the spool. For the spool carrier, I've made these parts. This piece just leaves the correct amount of spacing to fit the spool, and this is what the spool will go on. And from there, I can just, from there, I can just use the regular mounting hardware that came with the spool gun. Look at me welding machine parts. Bad form. You might be looking at this and thinking, wow, what a lazy guy. Why don't you just take it apart? And to that, I say, you're right. As it turns out, not only am I lazy, I'm also dumb. This isn't steel. Grinds like steel, but does not weld like steel. Broke right off. After much anguish and contemplating my life decisions, I went ahead and made this little bracket, which can fit into these two holes that I drilled on here. And I'll just weld that to my spool holder. I've gone ahead and attached the print head and this thing is looking ridiculous. Everything seems to be working all right. The last thing we got to do is figure out how to attach this to this. And I'm thinking I'm just going to use the original tube that came on the 3D printer because why not? That goes there and then this, we got to figure out how to make that work. So we got our little piece. That just slides right on there. Now I could braze these together, but I'm a little scared I'm gonna plug the hole in there with solder. So we're gonna use our good old friend, quick setting epoxy. So I snuck off for a second there to figure out all the electronic stuff, but everything is just about the same as when you last saw it. The only change 
is I've added a relay. But I've meticulously picked through the firmware and removed anything regarding the heated bed or the hot end. I've gone ahead and wired a relay to one of the fan outputs, and this relay is what triggers the welder. So we can send an M106 to turn it on and an M107 to turn it off. I've loaded a spool of ER5356 wire for welding aluminum. On the other end of this, you can see the old spool thing from the welder. Mostly because I don't want to modify my welder at all, and I also don't want to run it expecting a load and not getting a load. So that's just going to spin while this is going. These lines are all hooked up to the welder. This is for the trigger, ground. You know how a welder works. Now I've tested the G-code a few times dry, but I have yet to test it with the welder on. And boy oh boy, I am scared. I got my e-stop over here. It's a light switch. Ain't nothing to it but to do it, huh? Let's do it. Well, that didn't go quite as planned. As you can see, here is our beautiful weld. Here is our absolutely mint condition welding tip. So I think we started off a little hot. Let's try this again, but colder. So. This is obviously not working very well. I think what the problem is, is I'm trying to use the stepper motor for the extruder on the 3D printer to feed the wire. The way that any slicer that I've found works, the feed rate for that and the gantry are matched, which doesn't work for welding. We need a lot more feed rate for the extruder. And that could be fixed by writing a new slicer for this, but we're going quick and dirty here. So I've taken the wire feed mechanism from the spool gun and stuck it on here. So now all the wire feeding is controlled by the welder. And I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to unplug this without modifying the firmware and the code, so stepper motor stays. We'll make it spin a little flag or something. I googled flag and this came up, so it's perfect. Now also, I'm gonna switch everything over so it's gonna be welding steel, just because I've got far more steel I'm willing to waste than aluminum. So, let's do that. Here's what we got with our current print settings. Um, not great. One, the gantry's moving too fast, clearly. Two, I think I need it to be paused at the start of it for a little bit. I think I can get that by using the extruder retract function in the slicer, which will just give it a little bit more time at the front of each pass. Either way, ain't nothing to do but to try again. All right, this thing's not working. I think our main problem is this highly professionally built wire feed system. Didn't know it was possible, but we're gonna make it more professional. I've taken the end piece off of this gun and pulled out the liner. And I have this longer piece of liner that I had laying around. And I've cut it to where it will fit in the gun and be clamped in place by this bit. Now we just gotta figure out how to affix this end in here. I'm kind of thinking I can just shove this in here and make a block that will fit right here and get clamped down by this fender washer. It's set to pause for 30 seconds in between layers to let everything cool down. Check it out. We actually managed to stack some beads. And it seems pretty close to what I guessed the settings would be. The one issue we have, obviously everything gets very hot. And this is where the runs start. This is where they end. I think the plate ends up getting too hot by the time we get over to here, causing the bead to sink down lower. And that just becomes worse and worse and worse with each layer. So we're gonna try just a longer cool down. And I've adjusted the settings just a little bit. 
future me here. Oh, how embarrassing. I'm wearing the same shirt. Slob. I'm not gonna make you watch a million more failed prints. I tried adjusting the settings over and over and over again and never really got happy with the results. So this problem could be remedied by having a variable feed rate by actually programming the stepper to feed the wire properly. But in this video, we're doing the quick and dirty method. So my solution, no cooldown time. Roll that one. So that's supposed to be half of a sphere. And honestly, it doesn't look too bad. I clearly had issues with closing up that top, but I kind of had a feeling that would happen. This is crazy, man. It's kind of working. If any project's gonna give me cataracts, it's this one. Obviously the tolerances aren't great. We're not gonna be making any perfect machinable parts on this, but for art, man, Eh? Maybe? So the printer's well on its way to self-destructing. Some of these rubber wheels are starting to melt. And we've managed to print quite a few little barnacles. But before this thing completely self-destructs, I think we should try something more interesting. This is something I was working on years and years ago that I never finished. I was just trying to make a hand out of sheet metal. Let's finish that project. So one thing I noticed when I was doing a longer print is this gets a lot hotter than I want it to. So I've installed a very professional forced air cooling system. Highly effective! Now obviously that will blow all the shielding gas away, but I've programmed in some pauses where the machine will pause for 10 minutes, a third of the way through the program, and I'll just turn that on for that to cool everything off quickly. Now, ain't nothing to it but to do it. So, that didn't really go as planned. Although, we were able to print layers on this thing, and this, as you can clearly see, is a very janky setup. I think with a little bit more refinement, this could actually work. So, I'll be revisiting this in the future. The programming involved to make this work is far beyond what I am proficient at now, so. It's gonna take me a while to crack this one, but I, I am gonna keep working on it because I think this is an interesting idea. There's definitely some improvements to be made. For one, better wire feed. Ideally a wire feed with a stepper motor on it so that we can change the wire feed amount based on the temperature. I think getting some temperature sensors involved and some active cooling would be nice. I don't know, there's a lot to be explored here. Either way, thanks for coming along for the journey. If you like what you saw, leave a good old danger. Thank you for watching.